we're going to go through the analysis of a series RLC circuit now. RLC, resistance, inductance, L, and C, capacitance. All three components in a series circuit. This video is about the ohms, the amps, and the volts. Okay, let's see what we got. So I put in some values on these things. Source voltage with a frequency. I got a resistance. You buy your resistors with a resistance. So eight ohms. The inductor, 29.2 millihenries, and the capacitor, 530 microfarads. So first step, as we're used to, is to look at the frequency and say, how is my capacitor and how is my inductor going to react to that frequency? Inductance, what's its ohmic value going to be? It's XL, inductive reactance. Two times pi times the frequency, over here, 60 hertz, times the inductance in Henry's. Now there's shortcuts on the calculator, but I just spell them all out so we can see the number clearly. Okay, multiply those together and we'll get our ohmic value for the inductor. Down here on the capacitor, how much opposition does it provide? Well, one divided by the quantity, two times pi times frequency, 60 hertz, times the capacitance in farads. Again, I wrote it all out so we can see it. 530 microfarads. These are millis and micros. Remember, milli, micro, nano, pico. Yeah, so milli, micro. So 530 micros, the hundreds, the tens, and the units. 530 micros. Okay, so let's, let's get going. Let's see what we got. Let's punch these two in the calculator and see what we come out with for ohms. Feel free to pause the video anywhere along the way and try and do the calculations yourself and then restart it again. But here, we'll do it in our head here. That's right. Hopefully you got 11 ohms on the inductor and five ohms on the capacitor. Capacitive reactants, five ohms. Inductive reactants, 11 ohms. Okay, so how do we add these together? So I got a resistance. And here we'll go back to our original vectors to think about this. We can do it by formula and I'll write that up shortly. But let's look at the vectors first. My resistor is always gonna be in phase because remember the reference, I didn't draw it here, but the reference is current. So the resistive voltage and the resistance are in phase with the uh, current. The inductive voltage and the inductive reactance lead by 90 degrees, Eli. Voltage comes before current. And the capacitive voltage lags behind, ice. Okay, so as we showed in the intro video, what we really do is we put the resistor where it went before, we put the inductance pointing up, the capacitor pointing down. And since these two vectors oppose each other, I simply take the little one away from the big one. And what am I left with? This is what I will call my net reactants or total reactants. X is for reactants. Remember, inductive reactants, capacitive reactants, total reactants when I consider both of them together because they're playing off each other in here in this circuit. And my reactive voltage will be a similar calculation. So there's two formulas we could use to combine these ohmic values to get my total ohms here. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, what is that total? If I've got 11 ohms up here and five down here, 11 minus five will leave me with six. And so I would run that six over here, that would be this side of the triangle. And the hypotenuse are the total values. So let's write it over there. Once I put it in this format, it looks very much like what? An RL circuit. Because the capacitance, the capacitive reactance was less than the inductance. It takes away from some of the inductive reactance and the circuit is left looking like a resistive inductive circuit. And we solve them like we always did before. 
Here's what the two formulas for Z would look like. They look somewhat familiar. It's using Pythagoras. Here we already did the subtraction, figured out what the net reactants or total reactants was and made a triangle. Eight squared plus six squared equals Z squared. And that would be like this down here. R squared plus total reactants. We already did that math. Take the square root of that and I get Z. Now, the other way to write it is a longer format, R squared plus, and I can put in parentheses the difference of XL minus XC, the big one minus the little one, and square that quantity. Hopefully you're seeing the connection between these two. This is essentially this value, okay? And what do we get when we do that? So the circuit, the total circuit at its source we'll see 10 ohms of opposition. You go, well, Dave, that's kind of strange. It makes sense in a series circuit that the ohms at the total should be greater than the resistor, greater than the capacitor, right? Because I'm starting to add these things, vectorally, albeit. But how can I have more ohms here than here? It had to do with the way that the capacitor and the inductor play off each other. We'll talk more about that in class. But for now, we're just analyzing the circuit. This large vector here, sure, is longer than the total circuit values. It's a longer vector than that is, magnitude-wise. But because the capacitor plays off of the inductor, the two counteract each other. The, two, the one limits the effect of the other one. That's what happens when you have two vectors directly opposing. Like I said earlier, it's like, walking north 10 blocks just to walk south five blocks, okay? Or in this case, 11 and five, okay? So that's my impedance. When we know now that once I have my total circuit impedance in a series circuit, my total circuit ohms, I can simply use Ohm's law, take my voltage, source voltage, divided by my total impedance, and I'm gonna get my current. 120 divided by 10. There we have it, 12 amps. Or you could double check your work, amps times ohms, 12 times 10 equals volts. And why did I write the 12 everywhere? Series circuit, same current everywhere. So I didn't necessarily need to, but it makes it easier for me because I can use Ohm's law within any specific component to get my further values. As we're gonna bump into right now and get, and get our voltages. Our voltage drops on these various components. Now, how are we gonna do that? We simply go Ohm's law. Ohms times amps gives me volts. Let's calculate them out. 96, 132, and 60 volts. Wait a minute. You tell me there's a bigger voltage drop here than the source voltage is pushing in there? Yeah, again, it's this playing off each other that these two components are doing, these reactive components. And you go, well, that breaks the rules. Well, in a way, yes, but let's look at it this way. Just like my uh, inductive reactants and my capacitive reactants, either one or both can end up greater than the source uh, impedance as long as the difference ends up less, we're fine. So that 130, 132, excuse me, minus the 60 gives me what? 132 minus 60 gives me 70 is what my total reactive voltage is because the short vector minus the big vector. All right, excuse me, the other way around, big vector minus the short vector. Take the little vector away from the big vector, okay? And that's gonna leave me. Formulas are very similar to what we just saw for impedance. I can either use this one, which uses the larger inductive voltage minus the capacitive voltage and squares the quantity, or if I did that math already and ended up with my total 
reactive voltage, not my total circuit voltage, but the reactive voltage of 72 volts. It's simple Pythagoras between this and, oh, I didn't transfer that down, the resistive 96. So I could use this formula and just use 96 volts squared plus 72 volts squared. Again, see the connection between these two formulas? Really the same thing. Okay. And if I punch this in the calculator, I should get 120 volts. Is that my source voltage? Yes. Because it's a little review, the horizontal component, just like my vectors, is always the resistive component, the horizontal values, the resistance, the uh, resistive voltage. The vertical is always the reactive. In the past, it was inductive or capacitive. Now, it's the difference between the two, the big one minus the little one. And when we combine those vectorally, Pythagorasly, a squared plus b squared, c squared, okay, we end up with our hypotenuse, which is always the total circuit values. So that's really what we're adding in this class. We're adding this concept of opposing vectors. The little one will counteract the big one to a certain degree. That's really the main principle we're adding here. And we're going to see what the ramifications of that are in uh, various kinds of circuits. Okay. So that's what we have here. If we uh, watch the next video, we'll see the power numbers and, and how those relate. We'll see that they're very similar to what we're used to. But we'll go through that process.